Hello everyone, and welcome back to World of Ship Splits with Terry. It's about time that we continue with our exploration of the German destroyer tech tree. I started that a bunch of weeks ago, but you know, lots of stuff's happening always. So today we are looking at the Leberecht Mars, also known as Z1, or Zerstörer 1. <laughs> Zerstörer being German for, for destroyer, and hence the, the Z. So, uh, this is the actual first ship that was built uh, for for the Kriegsmarine, um, and it, it, like I mentioned before, depending on who you ask, either German destroyers were decades ahead of their time and um, massive feats of engineering, or they were a little bit crap. And one of the problems that the Z1 had, and others of the earlier designs, was that uh, they were taking on a lot of water. They were a bit top-heavy, especially with the guns and the turrets, and um, the bows weren't particularly well designed, so they had to do some some refinements on these things. They weren't also super successful for various reasons. Now, in the in the career of the Leberecht Mars, there's one episode which is well, particularly embarrassing. So, of course, that's what we're going to be talking about. Um, in the 1940, early 1940s, the uh, the British were having fishing boats out in the Dogger Bank, which is an area in the North Sea. And the Germans, well, they thought that was a bit fishy, pun intended, especially that there were also British submarines suspected to be in the area. So they decided to send a group of six destroyers out to deal with said fishing boats and any submarines they could encounter on the way. The, the boats were... Yeah, on, on their way to, to the site, and they noticed uh, an airplane overhead. They assumed it was a British reconnaissance plane and opened fire. The plane returned fire, and dropped some bombs, and uh, actually damaged the Leberecht mast to the point that she was sinking. So, well, clearly the other destroyers were, were, um, were getting close by and helping with, uh, with the survivors. But then, while while they were all milling around trying to pick up the so the sailors from from this one, uh, one of the other destroyers exploded, and the uh, the assumption was that either they have they have been coming under air attack again, or that uh, they they were attack being attacked by a submarine. So a frantic a frantic discharge of ammunition ensued, and a, a third destroyer managed to jam his own rudder by <laughs> dropping depth charges. <laughs> Uh, and at that point, with uh, with two destroyers sunk almost with all hands and uh, one destroyer damaged, they decided to abort the mission and return back home. Upon investigation, it turned out that uh, this, in fact, was not uh, a British reconnaissance plane slash bomber that was attacking them. It was, in fact, a German one, because the Luftwaffe had been setting out to do anti-shipping missions, but because the Luftwaffe, the German Air Force and the Kriegsmarine, the German Navy, weren't talking to each other <laughs> and were actually in a constant state of rivalry. The Luftwaffe had not been telling the Kriegsmarine that they were per, they were conducting anti-shipping missions in the area, and likewise the Kriegsmarine hadn't been telling the Luftwaffe that it was setting a, sending out a fleet of destroyers. So this unfortunate incident cost almost 600 soldiers and their life and uh, sunk two destroyers and damaged a third. But yeah, that, that was the rather unglorious end of the career of the Leberecht Mars. Right then, uh, so if you're not familiar with this format, I am playing the ship for the first time. So you're not normally when I'm doing reviews, I've played the ship somewhere between five and twenty times, and to just you know just to get an opinion. So in in this case, this is really my very first impression. Now this ship has already been in. This is my press account because I don't have enough blueprints in my personal account and I'm grinding the Italian line right now and I'm at the Trento so uh, I'm, I'm using my press account just to find out and just, you know to move ahead and find out if this is actually a line that I'm interested in grinding. So the ship was already here but I haven't done anything with it it has zero XP on it. So first things first we're going to uh, pick an elite bonus and I think I'm very much going to go with the destroyer modernization because I tend to play German destroyers as gunboats and I think uh, more hit points, more speed is a good thing. I'll take that over the 3% torpedo re uh, reload. Let's go with that for now. All right. 
So, uh, how does she compare then? So if we compare the Ernst Gede and the Leberecht Maas, uh, the Leberecht Maas gets one more engine booster, but that's about it. Other than that, it's the exact same skills. She has a little bit more hit points, same armor layout, more or less, by the looks of it. She's a bit faster, she's a bit more maneuverable. Still 3.9 seconds turn time, it's a bit on the slow side. Uh, and we're down to 128 millimeter guns, so we no longer have the 150s, which, I mean, the, the Anskeda didn't exist. But there were later sketches of equipping destroyers with 150 millimeter guns, and that definitely happened in some instances. So we're back to the 128s, which reload faster, but obviously don't do as much damage. What's uh, it's quite quite interesting to see, though, is that the 128s have ac actually have the same fire. You have the same fire chance on this thing than you have, I think, on the Brooklyn, <laughs> the 150 millimeter main gun equipped Bri uh, American light cruiser. So uh, that's a thing. So you, you might actually be able to do to set fires, but I generally I would prefer uh, using the armor piercing even with 128s. Uh, torpedoes, they are they've got the same the same set of torpedoes, same reload. They do more damage, have a bit more range, and are a little bit faster, which is generally good. Uh, the AA is still on mostly absent, and the concealment's a bit worse. So uh, how are we going to equip this thing? Let's let's take a look. All right, slot one. Given that it's a gunboat, um, I am I'm tempted to go with the main battery mod two. It's four and a half seconds, so it's not going to make a huge difference, but it is going to give us a bit of a boost because these uh, what was the turret traverse in these things? Uh, 15 degrees per second. That's not terrible. I mean, it's not great. So we could we could either choose uh, a turret traverse or we could choose a main battery reload. Um, I think I might, given that it's a gunboat, I might go with main battery reload here. Let's let's try it out. Our second slot should go obviously into the propulsion mod. Well, what's her, what's her, um, what's her uh, uh, time to full speed? 10 seconds. Yeah, especially for a for a destroyer hunter, I think propulsion mod is definitely necessary. Third slot is where it gets interesting. Now we could take concealment. Or we could take uh, steering gear. So she's got a 3.9 second uh, turn base turn time. Uh, turn time being the um, steering gear from one to from one side to uh, hard one hard one rudder to hard other side rudder. We could get that out, we could get that down by 15%, which isn't going to be a huge amount. But um, alternatively, we could take concealment for being able to surprise people a little bit more. Uh, given what's the base concealment 6.3, so we just get it to 5.7 or something. Um, we could also go speed. That might be interesting as well, if we are destroyer hunting. Although 5% max speed is generally not a huge amount. I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna go with steering for now. And we'll see how this plays, how this feels with the concealment, uh, because the, yeah, was it 6.3 kilometers isn't grand. But then again, I'm in a gunboat, and I want to see how this year, how what's this? Yeah, 3.39 seconds turn time instead of 3.9. We'll see how that feels. Uh, we are definitely going to take the high grade coal uh, reload, and we're going to go with speed and traverse. All right. Uh, we do have to put a commander in here, so let's find ourselves. Do we have somebody? No. Let's get somebody up to. Uh, don't have. I haven't been really been using the German commanders very much, have I? Uh, you. Uh, you good sir, uh, you have a good beard and you will become the destroyer commander in this thing. So let's level him up to, what are we, level, uh, tier 7, right? So let's get up to 7, okay. Is that done? Alright, um, let me quickly check out, before I put that in, because I do need to build the commander for the line going forward. Uh, what do we get at the end? We get two smokes, smoke hydro and engine boost, okay. So we do need the, um, how many hydros was that at the top? And the Z52, three hydros. Okay, three hydros is actually enough. When do we get a third hydro? Uh, nope, not in tier eight. Nope, not in tier nine. Okay, we're getting the third hydro in tier 10. So the, the reason I'm, where is he? Oh, here he is. Let's assign him first. The, the reason I'm wondering is, we're obviously taking underwater protection, but I wonder if the uh, battlefield support is worth it for a third hydro. Um, I'm almost tempted to say yes, because um, obviously, I mean, we'll end up with four hydros in, in, in tier 10, which we probably don't need. 
and it's hard to reset. The, the, the other obvious skill would be taking the torpedo alert. But um, Hydro kind of Hydro kind of counters it or kind of makes it or makes it obsolete in a way because if you have the, the Hydra up, then you're going to see the torpedoes anyway. Of course, when you're not having the Hydra up, it's a different story. I'm going to go with this. I want to get a third Hydro. We obviously want preheating. We want victorious charge. Honestly, um, the unstoppable skill, uh, the, the amount of times I've had a Kraken in the last year or so, you could probably count that on one hand. So uh, this is just generally a skill I ignore. Um, yes, I do want Daredevil on a destroyer, and I don't have any precise aim or rapid reloads to deal with. I do want the recon skill to to, uh, to get the cooldown, and um, I want the fully prepared as well. Okay, and then Mistweaver, obviously, even though this ship doesn't actually have a um, doesn't actually have a smoke screen, but for the higher tiers, then it becomes useful. All right, camo. We're gonna stick the seaborne assault onto this ship, obviously. I mean, historical camo. What does it give us? Uh, range, top, top range, traverse, and surface detection. So all good stuff. But we're gonna sail with this one for now, as is standard around here. All right. So, um, do I have the consumables on auto resupply? Yes, I do. It's important. I don't forget that. Okay. So in this. This, is, this might not be my final setup. I'm going to be playing around a little bit more and figuring out what I'm going to get myself into. But for now, this is going to be the very first battle I am going to play in the Leberecht Mars. All right, and we're bottom tier. Kagro, Aka, Aka, Aka. <laughs> and three battleships. Okay, that, that's... And we're, we're playing cage and center control. So that... Uh, I kind of know what I'm going to get up to. I'm going to load the armor piercing and start hunting destroyers in there, I think. Uh, no cruisers on the enemy team, just battleships. And me myself with uh, with my guns ready. Okay. Uh, first things first. We're gonna engine boost ourselves into the capture circle. Uh, this I'm, I'm commenting this live, by the way. So um, just just so you know. <laughs> All right. Let's get in there. Uh, I don't want to I don't want to sail around that edge because I might run straight into three 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 destroyers and two battleships. And I'm not in the sneakiest ship out there. There's our own friendly Akka. So, uh, I mean, the, we, we are we are wanting to get into the center and kind of hold the um, hold. Can, can you get out of the way, please? All right, we'll go the other way around then. Fine. Okay, uh, one destroyer in only. No, now it's two of them. Okay, uh, Akka has run into has run into the island. Uh, do we have something to shoot at? Not yet. Okay, let's go. Let's let's head to the center island and see what we get to shoot at. Ah, enemy Aka. Hello. Uh, hydro up in case there are torps out. And let's start lighting him up. There come the torps. That's battleship shooting at me. Oh, that wasn't a bad drop. We might actually have to... We might actually end up taking one here. Yep, I'm gonna take one. That's okay. And everybody's shooting at me, obviously. More torps coming from the other direction, so let's uh, tuck ourselves in here and start lighting lighting up these guys. Um, North Carolina. Okay. He gets cross torped. If you shoot at battleships, uh, you often can you often can penetrate with German guns the the uh, the bow section. Although, uh, okay, North Carolina is going to go behind the island. Okay. Uh, right. No, no other destroyers in here. I've still got one torp on. Oh, four torps, not bad. And we get our forward guns firing at the Richelieu. Right? He's sitting there, so I can just use my. Let's get my nose in. He can't. He can't see me because my. Uh, because my my highest my highest spotting section is sitting behind the island. So as long as he can't spot me, and there's no other destroyers around here. I don't know where they are, but um, I'm sitting in the capture circle. And if they want to come in here, they're going to have to uh, compete with me. Okay, there's the Akka. Hello. Are you going to come out? Where do you want to go? What are you plan? What, what's your What's your game plan here, Akka? Okay. Where Where do you, Where are you going? Yeah, yeah, I'm on it. Are you coming around? It looks like you are. 
And engine boost up. And he's dead. <laughs> yeah, that didn't work, did it? <laughs> All right. Um, that, uh, that did not work out. So where are we going now? Uh, there's nobody left here. So we may as well... Uh, how many destroyers left? Two destroyers left. Uh, let's just be unspotted, get our guns turned around, and head behind the island again. I'm gonna start using high explosive against the Ritchie. Oh, no, never mind. There's a destroyer spotted over there. Okay, back to the armor piercing. He's hunting our battleships. Uh, since there's nobody else here, I'm gonna go and deal with that destroyer there. Because we don't have any cruisers. So I'm gonna get on duty here and get the Kagero over there under fire. He's probably... Okay, Tashkent is hunting him as well. So we probably don't need both of us. Uh, there come the Torps. Where is he? Is he firing his guns? No, he isn't. Alright, Tashkent is hunting him. Torpedo! Then I'm gonna head back... I'm gonna head back and deal with that other Akkad that's over there. And... Turn ship around. And back there, because there was another Akkadsky over there. So I am spotted, so he is here somewhere. No, I'm not spotted. He might be behind the island. Uh, so let's let's be let's be cautious. Ah, oh, there come the torps. But he's somewhere here. That's one spread. Oh, there he is. Hello. Okay, let's hunt this guy. All right, you're mine. I drop, just in case he's got more torps away, because that was only one spread. And slow down. We don't want to overshoot and run straight into his torps. Yep, there come the spread. That was predictable. And I can lob over this. I knew he, I knew you had some in reserve. Okay, now we just need to... Uh, Aka gets three, right? So there could be a third one, but I've got the Hydra up. Let's, uh, let's still be cautious and slow down again. We just want to get out and get into gun range and just murder this guy. Okay, he dead. And um, he didn't get any more torps away, so that just leaves the Richelieu. So now we can just run and have some fun. Uh, let's, uh, he's probably not going to survive long enough for me to do anything about it, but uh, let's go. Let's keep shooting at the Richelieu. I'm not going to get torps away at this guy anymore. He's going to be dead before that happens. Uh, a little bit further behind. And we're just gonna kill him. You see, if you if you hit the rear section of these things, there we go. Uh, you can get full pens or even one the hundred twenty eights. Right, that didn't go too badly, did it? <laughs> okay, I'm already happy with my choice of um, the steering in slot three because uh, uh, yeah, that that is definitely worth it. And uh, yeah, we 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 done good, I'd say. Uh, we've killed. I mean, we killed three ships, two destroyers and one, one Richelieu that we, we just picked up. Oh, we, we actually managed a permafloat somewhere. That's how we got some damage. Nice, nice one. So, yeah, um, that was my very first battle in the Leberecht Mars. I'm already enjoying the ship. And um, I think the, uh, the reload, the, the turrets are a bit sluggish on the traverse. So getting the turret traverse up might not be a bad thing, especially if I need to maneuver. But uh, the the reload is nice as well because the gun reload. What's the gun reload now? Actually, I haven't looked. We have 4.28 seconds uh, with five guns, and these are very hard hitting 128s. Uh, I think I'm gonna stick with that. So yeah, this this is probably the the setup I'm gonna stay with, and um, definitely definitely enjoying myself in this ship so far. Uh, it's a it's a great boat for things like destroyer hunting. Now, how this looks like if we're going to be confronted with cruisers is, a, is an entirely different story, but well, we shall see. Anyway, that's it for today. Thanks, everybody. And um, I'll see you in the next round when we're up, going up to tier eight. <laughs> Until then, bye-bye.